Alright, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So I have a follow-up video today on the MacBook Pro 2009 and the reason that uh, I'm doing this video is because I wanted to showcase how well I think a MacBook Pro 2009 can actually work out and what you're capable of doing with it. Now I've had a chance to work with the MacBook Pro with the standard hard drive in it and although it certainly wasn't that bad um, there are definitely some pros to getting a SSD and I probably don't need to tell you why a solid state drive is so good these days. It just is. They're so fast and they're uh, definitely easily as reliable as a standard hard drive. So a lot's changed. Um, I did have a whole bunch of video of putting the hard drive in but I've done that before. If you look through my history I actually put in a solid state drive into a MacBook Pro 2011 and it was the same exact chassis as this one so I'm just gonna show snippets of it but I'm not gonna show the whole video now I'm gonna get right into it and let you know that the SSD is now in the system and I'm actually running off of this system the MacBook Pro 2009 and as you can see it's running great uh, it's got the 2.26 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo has uh, four gigabytes of RAM in it. Now I have elected to upgrade this to eight gigabytes. And a GeForce 9400M with 256 megabytes. And for storage, we're now sporting a 240 gigabyte SSD where before we had a 250 gigabyte standard hard drive. So it is remarkably fast and far better. I like that the older models have the super drives because I still find that useful. So the system overall ran great with the hard drive, but like I said with the SSD I got much better results. So uh, forgive me this one isn't, uh, this video isn't too edited, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to do some of the higher quality edited videos that I really like doing. My um, teaching schedule has slowed down a little bit now so things are going to get a little bit better and I had a situation going on here for the last month or so in my personal life that really really made it difficult for me to shoot videos and take time to actually produce nice videos so I do apologize for the rough editing and the kind of quick videos that I've been doing but hopefully things are going to get a lot better. Anyway I did a couple of different things for the videos, or excuse me, the testing that I did. Um, let me bring up the numbers that I got. First of all, I decided the first thing I wanted to know was how well did the system do before and after the SSD installation. And first of all, you can see that Blackmagic, the hard drive test. I was getting somewhere between 45 and 60 megabytes a second write performance. Read performance of course was much better, it's usually about 30 to 40 percent faster. Now what was interesting is with the Blackmagic disk test, uh, prior to turning on trim, I was getting fairly unremarkable test scores. Uh, this was really disappointing for me. Then. I did the Blackmagic disk test with the SSD and trim enabled and I was getting 173 megabytes right and I was getting about 250 reads so way better and reads here on the hard drive were only about 80 megabytes now this definitely made a huge difference as you can imagine uh, trim is actually very important now there is a tool that you can download. If you're brave enough you can do it yourself on the command line but there's some very delicate changes you have to make. So as you can imagine trim is actually very important. I'm gonna go ahead and run it and let you have a look. Now this is the tool that I'm using but just keep in mind that you do have to pay $9.99 I'm on the trial right now and I'm definitely going to pay the $9.99 because if you don't trim gets disabled. 
with El Capitan, you can technically enable it yourself, like I said before, but it is a little bit of work. Um, you can actually do some benchmarking, and there are some settings here that you can change. So here's the benchmark. Now, I'm capturing video right now, so I'm not going to do this benchmark, but it pretty much lined up with the benchmark scores that I got when I was doing Black Magic. So make sure you enable trim. You can see the differences you're going to get and check out startup. I got 48.3 seconds starting up with the hard drive. With the SSD installed and El Capitan installed, now on Yosemite it boots up much slower. So I do recommend installing El Capitan. You get 22.08 seconds. And then when I enable trim, I had a boot up time of 18.6 seconds. So about 18 and a half seconds. Not bad at all. Okay, now for iMovie, I got a startup time on the standard hard drive of 39.2 seconds and an iMovie startup time of 15.21 seconds and an iMovie startup time with trim enable, enabled of 9.58 seconds, which was definitely a big change. This startup time for iMovie took almost as much time as it took to actually boot up the system. I had a one minute render test that I set up in iMovie, which I'll show you here. And it was very simple actually. So things are a little bit slow right now, of course, because I'm rendering video. Normally it was much faster, as you can see with the startup time here. So with iMovie 1080p, it was one minute exactly of 1080p footage with a little bit of sound. No other edits, cuts, or anything fancy. With the standard hard drive, I got a time of 8 minutes 32 seconds. With the iMovie 1080p one minute render test with the SSD, I got 7 minutes 43 seconds. And the iMovie 1080p one minute render test, I got 7 minutes 3 seconds. If my memory serves me correctly, my MacBook Pro 2008 actually does a little bit better than this. So in another video here in the future, I'm going to pull out the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Pro 2009. So the 2008, 2009, and I'll take the iMovie library off this computer, copy it to the MacBook Pro 2008, and then I'm going to run the same test. And just curious, but I'm pretty sure I've gotten a better score than that because I don't remember a video render if I did like say a 10 minute video taking an hour and a half on my MacBook Pro 2008. There is however, let's see if I can find it, an update that's available on iMovie to version 10.1.4 so I'm pretty sure I've done that update on my MacBook Pro 2008. So I'll check that and see if they're on the same version. And I'll also upgrade this one and do another test. And again, I'll put that in my next video. We'll find out if that helps at all. And the last thing that I tested was the startup of Safari. With the hard drive, it took 9.38 seconds. I forgot to test Safari startup without trim. But with trim enabled, I got a three second startup time. So there was a definite improvement here uh, with the SSD. So looking at this 2009 computer and what it's able to do, the bottom line is uh, it definitely can play 1080p video on YouTube without any problems. Yes, I am able to do documents and spreadsheets and, you know, basic office type tasks. Definitely fast enough for average everyday use. I don't want to make you wait for the MacBook Pro 2008 render times. So I pulled it out and I did a render and the iMovie version and operating system version are exactly the same. El Capitan and the same version of iMovie and I received a render time on the MacBook Pro 2008 of 7 minutes 13 seconds and keeping in mind this is a one minute video 
of 1080p and I use exactly the same video for all these tests. And just for argument's sake, I actually did a render of the MacBook Pro 2015 and I got a render time of 36 seconds. So you can see um, your money definitely does help when you buy a newer system. This is far better than any of my other render times. So overall, unfortunately, um, with the 2008 and 2009 MacBook Pros, render time is going to be a little bit slow. I had that 30 minute video. Now it originally took 8 minutes 32 seconds to render out that minute. Um, but I was getting higher render times also. So once I got the SSD set up with trim, I was getting much better render times. That 30 minute video that I rendered that you have seen, the first 2009 MacBook Pro video, took me around five hours. I'm thinking it would be much faster now on this MacBook Pro with the SSD. And the MacBook Pro 2008 had six gigabytes of memory. This one has two gigabytes, or excuse me, four gigabytes of memory. And I did order eight gigabytes, should be coming later in the week. And I'll pop it in and maybe do another render test and see what I get. And when I say render, of course, I mean exporting the video to a final file. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed the video, if you could, take a few seconds and share the video. I always appreciate all the support you give. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.